<laughs> All right, welcome to another episode of Utterly Unrelated, the podcast that comes with spam fried rice. Fuck yes! <laughs> I was hoping you'd address it. Yeah, I, I just <laughs> Aaron gave me like a huge Tupperware. Well, not a huge Tupperware, oh, 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 a, a normal person-sized Tupperware of spam fried rice, and I quickly ate like half of it. I can't. I can't not give people spam fried rice when I make a giant tub of it. Yeah, and Aaron, I was like, yeah, I'm a little peckish, like. I'm probably going to order something. And then I came inside to say hi to Dave and the kids. And Aaron was like, I mean, do you like want some spam fried rice? I was like, I'm never going to say no to that. Yes, Yes. I would definitely like some spam fried rice. Hell yeah. (laughs) So if halfway through the episode, I just kind of drop off. That's why. (laughs) I'm just napping. (laughs) I'm either napping or munching. Napping, munching. In Um, some sort of rice coma. (laughs) Fucking love rice. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Everybody check this out. I am excited. I got a rice cooker for 13 fucking dollars. Yeah, it's uh, a six cup rice cooker. And so I always um, I always get everything like used, refurbished, dent box special off of Amazon. Because, uh, I mean, fucking you get stuff for like a third the price and I'm frugal. <laughs> and so initially I was like, I don't know about this. Because <laughs> it was like boiling over because I just gave the rice a very vague like wash. I just kind of like man i'm gonna wash you because i think i should <laughs> but then once i actually washed the rice thoroughly it didn't boil over so <clears throat> oh really yeah. so it's it was all of the uh the starchy the starch foam. coming up yep yeah. absolutely um which was very fun to clean off of all my surfaces dude well, that's why I, initially i was like fuck this rice maker i am not doing this because it like makes this just kind of Flemmy foam that gets oh, worse when you try to wipe it off. It's ugh. my favorite was I had a rice cooker that was my parents' rice cooker from I don't know the seventies, and it had a metal lid, and you could hear from the other room like you could turn it on and go in the other room and you hear like of the lid fucking bam, 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 like gyrating up and down from all the starchy stuff, and you're like, oh rice is cooking, and when it stops, you're like. <laughs> Rice is done. That's kind of awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's like Down a weird tinny, like, dee, 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 dee. it was really weird. <laughs> oh, Megan and I are so excited. We have so many big things happening. So our website is up. And awesome. And full of merch. Utterly unrelated pod. That's P-O-D dot com. Um, you can listen to our episodes. You can check out our merch. You can find where we're having live events. You can contact us, and we have um, a blog section that we'll keep updated with random things. If you need to know, and we'll put them up there. At the moment, we don't, um, but we will. So keep checking back. I should get on that. Yeah. More people need to know the thoughts that I think when I'm on the shitter, dude. And I don't really Facebook, so the maybe blog that's section what should be yours. Yeah, dude, I'll hook you up. I'll show you how to do it. I'm gonna put it. all my all my hot takes oh, on. Please do, <clears throat> please do, because we need like a Twitter feed, but without the Twitter interactions. You know what I mean? I like to interact with people. If you have my number, you can text me. Oh, you can. Um, people can comment on the blog too. <laughs> uh, yeah, that sounds fucking awesome. So if you ever wanted to know my my hot takes on just weird subjects yeah. like why seafood is. Just, just the fucking worst. See the blog. That section will be exclusively Megan's brain, Megan's brain hot takes. Stuff nobody ever needed to know. Yes, there was. Something... We'll just call it diarrhea of the brain. Oh, I That's love it. That's my blog. It'll be perfect. Yeah. So it's it's really exciting. We're we're dude. Thank you to everyone who's joined us in the last week and like. Yeah, there's a huge listening. fucking uptick. Yeah, we had a huge uptick of people, dude. Yeah, we we're don't... not going to name numbers, but they're nice. We don't know where you came from, but we're so glad you're here. Yeah, you're like the Cotton Eye Joe of listeners. Dude, we're so... Yes, yeah. But just don't go. <laughs> yeah, don't We go. just want the where did you come from, not the <laughs> yeah. where did you go part. I know some of you are in the Philippines. Some of you are in France. Um, I have... I think there's two... There's lots of Canada. Some lots Alaska. of Alaska. Two in Reykjavik, I think. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. So welcome. We're so happy to have you. Um, and keep listening in Reykjavik so someday we can go on tour to Reykjavik. And like... I actually made a friend out there, too. Oh, fun. Yeah. I want to go sit in the, I don't know, in all of the natural, like, springs out there. Now, okay, I, I think that it sounds really nice. I'm a little... I mean, this is coming from somebody who lives in Portland, the whitest fucking place on earth. I'm a little hesitant to go somewhere where the population of white people is that high. 
I'm always sure that they're up to something, but I'm <laughs> I was waiting willing for, like, to the, give it a try. They're making, they have like some secret underground toy factory where they make dolls that like listen in on people. I didn't think it was anything like that. I, it was seafood related. Oh. I'm not sure. Yeah. 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 They're putting seafood in ketchup or they seafood like, in, like they're sneaking it in they and have stuff. Like, <gasps> um, <laughs> <laughs> this month is super exciting. We are doing... The Mormon month of February. The month of we Mormon February. We should have done Mormons in May. I that know. Made more that sense. would have been perfect. What I, are we going to do in May now? Oh, I don't know. We were going to do. Ser- I had an idea, but I forgot it. We were going to do serial killer poetry this month for Valentine's Day, but maybe we can swip swap them. Yeah, murderer May. Oh. Mayerder. 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 Yes, Mayerder. <laughs> We'll come up with something. Yeah. Um, and it's not going to make sense. It's going to be a stretch. But you know but what? But you'll appreciate it. You'll appreciate it because you want you want shit to make sense. You're then not why are you listening to that. us? Yeah. You're coming here because we're, we're your fellow weirdos. Yeah, we're pretty fucking weird. That's good, though. But this month, since there's only three weeks, we're going to have three fucking bomb-ass episodes. Hell yeah. Um, Today, we're going to be... T- and I promise I will not make you the token Mormon because you're not a Mormon, but you were raised Mormon. And I will try not to make you the token Mormon. I'll try not to be like, hey, is this how it is too much? Do ask if um, it's how it is because I know um, if it is or not. Yeah, it's but better I'm than speculating yeah ask away okay good yeah ask all you want man i can't wait i'm so excited yeah this could be a little jack mormon q a yes uh so jack mormons are people who grew up mormon though are no longer oh so that's an actual it's not a derogatory term i heard it is but i'm not hurt by it okay i don't know what i you you i am no more hurt by that than if somebody called me a jack wagon i don't know what i don't understand why that's supposed Uh to be a hurtful thing to me i don't either i don't know huh mormons who jack off i have (laughs) gen i genuinely am not sure it's weird to me that that's not just blanket all mormons yeah like if it was like some sort of offensive word and then mormon like, if it was, like, seafood lover Mormon or something, I'd be like, <laughs> fuck you. That's hella offensive. I do not fucking like seafood. Yes. Um, but no, I, yeah. I I don't, ex-Mormon? I don't ex-Mormon? know. Ex-Mormon? I was baptized. Oh, okay. Um, But I couldn't go into the temple because I was born out of wedlock and so I'm, like, painted. That's fucked up. Whatever. I don't You're like, care. why did you baptize me then? Just so I could stand outside and be like, what are you guys doing in there? Is it warm? Sure, it would be nice to be <laughs> in there. I got to go in the cookies. waiting room and I didn't like it. Um, it I didn't like it because it looked like a bank that had weird vibes. Oh. Because it was all marble. Ooh. I my main question is how in the fuck. Did they get so much goddamn marble out to Lake Oswego? <laughs> like, I understand that there's, you know, places in Lake Oswego that are nice, but this is made of fuck. like, okay, I don't, I can't honestly attest that it's chiseled of marble, but everything at minimum is marble plated and gold. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. I'm like, how is this a house of religion? This seems like a house of excess. Yep. Because in mm-hmm. tax shelter, mm-hmm. tithing. Yes. That's one of the reasons that they're supposed to be prosperous. My mom, I told my mom we were doing Mormons. She's like, you're just going to slam Mormons the whole time. I was like, no, no. Also, no. oh, what the fuck do you care? You're not Mormon either. Oh, she's not? No. She goes oh. to like a Lutheran church or some shit. Well, I don't know if it's Lutheran. Lutheran. It's, <laughs> it's some sort of Christian. Oh, well, we're not <clears throat> talking about Jesus this week. Or next. What we're going to yeah, do. Yeah, Jesus is fine, whatever. Yeah, dude, this is going to be awesome. So today we're going to talk about. The most palatable of all Mormons, that is totally. the reality show Mormons. <laughs> We're talking the the sister wives, the brown, the brown family. family. Um, and then I am obsessed with them. Oh my gosh. When I said something, I was like, I wish you watched Sister Wives because you'd know what I meant when I said something about Christine. And she was like, What do you mean you wish I did? I fucking love yeah, Sister Wives. Like every fucking episode. I was dude. like, Oh my god, yes. Um, so today we're doing a Sister Wives deep dive, and then Megan has taken on uh, the Warren Jeffs issue, which is going to be... I don't want to do it, but I'm doing it. <laughs> it's going to be brutal, and I'm taking on the Salamander Letter. Which is dope as fuck. I'm so excited for so it. So I'm just going to let you all know now, I'm just going to do broad strokes on Warren Jeffs, because that shit is depressing. Mm-hmm. 
I it's, wish I and, and it's definitely the dark side of cults and Mormonism. Like the, when I was being raised Mormon, like it was all just you know <clears throat> making shit out of egg crates and you know really good food and learning how to sew and stuff. It was not like there weren't any nefarious like you know there was like no abuse or child brides. Most of the families were like really fun and like lots of home ec and arts and crafts. Yeah, it was dope. Yeah, dude, it was like the coolest fucking way to grow up. If you like. I'm sure I've said this before. The high school that I went to, um, we had a seminary on... All high schools. Yeah, all high schools do? I mean, I'm assuming, yeah. Oh. All high schools where, all high schools where there are Mormons. Oh. Yeah, you go to seminary at like 5 a.m. I fucking didn't. Yeah, I had friends that would be like, no, I go to seminary. I'm like, oh, yeah, we here smoking cigarettes and skipping class. Yeah, that's more what I was doing. Yeah. I wasn't skipping class on purpose, but I was definitely smoking cigarettes. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, I've never met... A Mormon who was unkind to my face. I never have. They probably weren't unkind to your back either. Mm, yeah, probably not. No. I mean, because I'm not someone who is a blatant person of color. Like, meaning, like, my... Oh, fuck. My skin is very lily white most times, you know? If you were... Uh, if you were more apparently... Like, if you had more melanin on you, then they would be saccharine sweet to you. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, when I was, like, really goth and very obviously not into the Mormon thing, they really took the whole, like, bring them in, bring them back into the fold mm. thing very seriously. Yeah. They were very, very nice to me. And that's why, to this day, to no fault of theirs, I'm, like, if someone's nice to me, I'm like, What's your angle? <laughs> what do you have to gain from this? Are you trying to brainwash me? <laughs> yeah, are you trying to are you trying to get me in your religion? Because I'm not gonna. <laughs> no, I unless swear. there's lasagna, then there might be a chance. You know, Mormons, I'm telling you, you might have a second chance. A good old mega assailant. <laughs> <laughs> bring me some lasagna. I'm really happy to hear you say that because I have found um, this new way to buy lasagna. It's called Amway, and if you just follow me. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh my god, you had me! I'm sorry, you I'm sorry. fucking had me! Oh, I was so. I was able to maintain Even that one for a minute. Even I was like, yeah, there's actually some energy drinks. And then I was like, oh, <laughs> god damn it! I'm sorry. Fuck you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Goodness. And the fuck of it is, there are some energy drinks you can only get from Amway, and they are really good. Dude, they sell a ham that is fairly exquisite <laughs> <laughs> i'm not all the way against amway i just don't want to be like the thing with amway is they do have products that i like but like you cannot get the products yeah. without being like an ambassador and i'm like why can't i just buy from you if you know somebody who does tupperware or like yeah. candlelight or something oh, or oh. Sensi, sensi they're more than stoked for you to buy from them yeah and if you're like i mean i don't want to like sell your shit but i'll buy from you they're like hell yeah or girl scouts yeah they're not gonna make you sell girl scout cookies nope. but with amway or like lularoe or most of like the really like uh di quote unquote direct marketing things like it's less the profit margins are less if people are buying from you than if you just directly recruit and so they're gonna be like yeah, like, well, you really like those energy drinks? How'd you like to get them for free? And it's like, no, you don't understand. I don't know enough people. Yeah. I would lose my ass at this. Mm -hmm. Just here's a hundred bucks. Give me a year's worth of energy drinks. Right. Like, right. why is that not good enough Just for you? Just take my fucking money. Yeah. Leave well enough alone. They're fucking. So I was watching this documentary. It's called The Family on Netflix. And uh, it's a, it's basically about a Christian cult. But these this section of the cult serves the political arm of our country mostly and so it's like trying to indoctrinate politicians into this particular cult it's really fucking interesting but is it a guitar church i wish Aww. it's not even that cool it's like bros who who clean the toilets of the places where the politicians come and stay and they like prepare breakfasts for them and then they all play basketball and go like study but study the bible but not the whole bible only <laughs> only matthew mark luke and john and like the only dude, the man parts, only the Jesus parts. Literally, they do not acknowledge anything else. And so, anyway, so the all the, guy, the parts of the Jesus man parts. I know, right? It's, it's a whole book about that. Well, okay, so they only that's do they New study. Testament. They only do New Testament. Yeah. That's fine. New um, Testament's better. If they were only doing Old Testament, I'd be terrified. <laughs> that would be some fucking brick and mortar shit. But yeah, so they were talking about how if someone, 
how easy it would be for someone to inadvertently join a cult because it feels oh, yeah. really good to be accepted by a group of people and to be a part of something bigger than yourself. And I was like, ooh, right there. That's why I'll never be in a cult. Ditto. I have no desire to be a part of something bigger than myself. I, I'd prefer not to. I'm going to drop the ball 100% of the oh, time. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know football, but when I lived in Seattle, I knew everyone loved the Huskies. So I loved the Cougars. Like, that's how much I want to be a part of something bigger I thought bigger that they loved the Seahawks. Oh, yeah. I think I'm talking about college football. Oh. I don't know. I just knew everybody loved the Huskies and I didn't want to. So I was like, ooh, I'm safe from brainwashing because I don't particularly want to be accepted by a quote unquote group of people. I think also <laughs> growing up Mormon is I, I would never I would be a shitty candidate for a cult because I would A, I'd immediately drop the ball. B, I'd be like, why the fuck are you nice to me? Yeah. Maybe if it was a cult where like people are mean to me, but even then, like the moment somebody's mean to me, I'm like, well, fuck you, too. Yeah. So, like, whether you're nice to me or mean to me, I guess my overall takeaway is, well, fuck you, too, unless I want to be your friend. Yeah. I'm kind well, of a dick. And I always have my own agenda going. So I'm never, <laughs> I'm, like, never in my head going to subscribe Bees to your schemes. agenda. Yeah. I'm never going <laughs> to subscribe to your agenda. While you're, like, talking to me about Jesus and I look like I'm engaged, what I'm really thinking is... I want cookies. Do you have cookies? I bet there's cookies hidden in the pantry of this weird cult house. I'm going to go find the cookies. Cookies, cookies, cookies. Oh my God, that's cookies, what I cookies, think. Cookies. Or gummy bears. They usually oh have gummy God, bears or gummy be... worms yes. from like the 80s and they have that different taste and they're a little bit chewier because they're old as fuck. Yes, they have more yes. chemicals in them because they weren't regulated back yeah. then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm... And they all taste the Always. same. But you yeah. open them up and they smell like a movie house. Oh. And then I switch immediately when I'm satiated. I switch to like... Do they have any money in their wallets? I wonder if they have money in their wallets. <laughs> Would they notice if I just stole, like, a dollar? <laughs> what if I stole a dollar from every wallet once every 37th day? Then I could buy more gummy worms. Like, I'm always going to have my own agenda. I'm an agent of chaos in my blood. I have <laughs> I nothing but it. schemes and chaos. Now, that being said... Um, me on a sunday it's an ad it's totally an ad it's the mormons they're trying to get you hooked <gasps> on amway they heard me they're like <laughs> they're like so you like our ham we've got ham we've got ancient we got gummy this new bears. company called hamway <laughs> you want to join oh my god i'm so sorry i'm using my phone for like my uh personal hotspot for the laptop out here and so like it rang and it's just like rah, rah. so i'm sorry <laughs> about that um but yeah like I'm just too willful. I remember my born again Christian grandmother asking my mother in front of me, why is your child so willful? She will not listen about Jesus. She has no Jesus in her heart. My mom was like, <laughs> and my mom was like, yeah, we're not doing that with her. And I was That's like, fucking awesome. They're not doing that with me, grandma. <laughs> <laughs> and she was just like, you're you're too much. Like you're not even worth the time and energy. Oh, <laughs> was like, is that your mom's mom or my your mom's dad's mom? mom. <laughs> they were devout born again Christians. My grandma Ugh. and grandpa. Yeah, that's what my mom said too. They weren't always like something happened in the family. I don't know what it was. No one talks about it. And then all of a sudden, everything was about Jesus. Did somebody get killed? Perhaps by them mm -hmm. in ways that maybe loosely could get tied back to them but they were like oh shit we did something bad we need to apologize to god for it okay you know what there's one situation i could see that happen yes my grandmother could have pulled like a serial mom thing where she was like do you, are those white shoes after labor day and then like as she walked by the person just like elbow them real hard off a cliff i could see that happening that's a possibility because <laughs> she was real strict about things like i don't remember my grandmother smiling or laughing ever like she didn't particularly like kids and so as a child i wasn't her favorite thing um and so like yeah but i bet she would have like just dead ass fucking off a cliff and then been like okay i lost my temper <laughs> i shouldn't have done that i'm sorry i'll reel it in the fuck of it is if i did something like that I don't think that I would be sorry. I would be angry at them for making me do it. Oh, that makes sense. Also, willful child syndrome. Yeah. That's... Only, I'm also an only child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an only child thing, too. Yeah. Which is not a bad thing. I think there's a lot to be said for only children. Yeah, we're very independent. Yeah. Fiercely independent and or generally very advanced. Yes. Because I was the other way. Really? I was cripplingly codependent on my mother. Oh, I was... Yeah. 
I, I love my mom, you know, but she's great, really nice lady. But I was always just fiercely independent because, like, I could do my own thing. Why the fuck yeah. wouldn't I? Well, I was, I needed her to entertain me at all times of the day. Oh, yeah. that sounds tiring. No, yeah. my so my mom was always working, so my grandmother was like kind of my primary parent, and oh. that was she was like, I don't know, maybe sixty two when I was born, and so like we would play Indiana Jones and stuff sometimes, like, but like. Overall, I kind of had to find my own fun because she'd be like, I'm watching my cooking shows. You're tiring me out. Like, she never, my grandmother wouldn't lie to me. Like, You're tiring me out. Go make your own fun. Oh, yeah. My Learn dad. how to sew. <laughs> Teach yourself how to do this or that. And I'm like, okay. And I'd come back and be like, I made a bag. And she'd yeah. be like, that's not very good. You should be. Oh. No, not in a bad way. Yeah. She would tell my, like, when, when my mom's generation. Is she Mormon? Yeah. Okay. She was Mormon, but like. She and she would wear like the holy garb and stuff every day, but like, is that the special underpants? Is that what they call that? Holy garb, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, the it's. I mean, it is it looks not like a, big a snuggled onesie. Onesie. <laughs> okay, here's it. <laughs> Do I not know it? it? It's. I mean, it looks like an old timey bathing suit, I guess. Kind oh, of. Oh, it's I'm two pieces of, though. I'm thinking of the Amish. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's not the Ma Clampet like <laughs> red one piece with the buttons yeah, on the butt. Yeah, so no, it's not that. It's um. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh no worries. It's pretty much yeah, just like old timey lightweight bloomers and like oh, a shirt. Okay. Like a really wide strap tank top, sometimes okay. t-shirty. Well, okay, so I can see where her telling you that your bag wasn't very good was to help you grow. Yeah, it was. She was very blunt. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But, like, she would actually take the time to tell me. My mom actually had a project in home ec. Um, and my grandmother was a sewing instructor. And she was, like, super stoked because she made this shirt and it looked fucking awesome. And my grandmother took one look at it and was like, I would have failed you. And my mom was like, <gasps> and I think my mom was fairly young. She was devastated. She oh was like, God. the buttons are on the wrong side. <gasps> I would have failed? Damn. Ooh. That was my grandmother in a nutshell. That's, that's who raised me. That Does that make a little bit of sense? A lot. <laughs> so if you've not watched Sister Wives, you don't actually need to to enjoy this episode. Yeah, totally. Enjoy, we're just going to rant about it. Enjoy this episode. Yeah. So we're going to give you some broad strokes here. Um, Sister Wives is an American reality television show on TLC that premiered September 26, 2010, according to Wikipedia. Uh, I never use Wikipedia for anything, but I feel like trash tv is okay to use wikipedia yeah we're for. using a yeah. wikipedia outline today because yeah. like i don't know man it would be kind of like a travesty to actually sit down and put pen to paper oh, over this yeah. like it's seriously yeah we're not doing like you know quantum physics stuff or, <laughs> or it's not a fucking term paper we're just discussing one of our favorite trash reality shows yeah and that's exactly what it is. we're watching it because anyway we'll get to that part um, so the show documents the life of a polygamist family, which is father Cody Brown, that's Cody with a K, yep. <laughs> and his four wives, Mary, Janelle, Christine, and Robin. That's and Mary with an I. Mary with an I, and Robin with a Y. Oh, yeah. Don't worry, you don't have to remember it. Um, and There's a quiz later. There is a quiz later. <laughs> They're 18 children. Um, so when the series starts, they all live in Lehigh, Utah, in a house. They all live in Robin one house. Robin wasn't there yet. No, yeah, so he was courting with Robin. Robin comes in, like, mid-season two? Uh, mid-season one. Okay. Yeah. So him and his three wives are living in Le Lehigh, Utah in a multi-story, single family Yeah, it's like two stories. It's, it's like a U-shaped house. Yeah. Um, it looks kind of like a compound. It's, I don't know, I'd live there. It yeah. looks pretty dope. Yeah, totally. And when you first see the show, you're like, what kind of train wreck is this? Well... It's not, though. It's Everyone's not. really nice to each other. So and, nice. like, Cody's a super loving father, and all the moms are In fucking amazing. Beginning. Yeah. So, okay, here's the thing. I watched, um, I don't know, like, maybe half. So there's, like, what, 16, 15 seasons? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I watched up to, like, I don't know, season seven or something, right? Um, and then I just stopped because I knew that Nick would judge me for watching it. And so I just like quit. But it, it was one of my guilty pleasures. 
Um, and I liked it because it was like, you know, everyone's nice to each other and there's conflict, but like not fucking really in a, like in a culture that I grew up in. So it was just like relaxing, like turn my brain off. It was like a hug, you know. Yeah. Um, well, and for you, I know you said that it was really comforting because it reminded yeah. you so much of the people you grew up with. Yeah. the Like yeah. the fun, happy families and stuff. And I was like, God, this is so nice. And yeah, it absolutely was like a lot of like when they... It's, like, really hot out, and so they get a block of ice, and they go up to, like, this hill, and they, like, sit on the block of ice and write it down. Like, stuff like that. Like, stuff that you do to entertain yourself when you don't do drugs. Yeah. And so, yeah, there was, like, all this stuff that I was like, oh, my God, I remember doing that, and it was, like, so nice. And then, like, they move... Well, okay. I, I, I watched... The first half and everyone was so nice and Aaron was like, oh my God, this is such a shit show. And I was like, what do you mean? Everyone's so nice. <laughs> and she's like, no, like after they like move. And I was like, what do you mean? And, Cause like they moved to this one place. It seemed like they're forever home. And then like they move again and it's fucking chaos. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so, so when you, so he, Cody is legally married to Mary, his first wife. And then together they brought in Janelle and Christine and they were all married for like 30 fucking years or something, 26 and years. And then. Important distinction oh, they don't all bang together. No, they don't all bang together. They're not all legally married. They don't bang each other and then him. Um, he bangs separately all of them. They bang no one else but him. Yes. Um, and they bang primarily for children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for reproduction. Yeah. Because. And romance. If. Uh, now I'm going to date myself here because I was absolutely obsessed and. Um, just sort of enamored with, um, oh my God, did I fucking forget the name of that Bill Paxton show? Big Love. Big Love. Thank I've you. I've never seen it. I don't like his face. And I, I, there's something about Chloe Savini. She scares me. Oh. She's like a ghost. If a ghost was a person, I don't like her. She seems very quiet. I didn't like her in the show because she's such a good actress. I hated her character. She is an amazing, amazing, amazing actor. Yeah. And actor, I, excuse me. I yeah. think that that's part of why... I I don't know, man. I just can't with her. She's too good. She's I still am sure she's a ghost, not a human. <laughs> she's a Victorian ghost. <sighs> so for several seasons, you see them living together happily. They're doing fun things like enjoying time together, which is weird. And like, um, yeah, they're like a real family. Like yeah. immediately. It's super weird. My family was like never into hanging out with each other. And they were all just like, oh, my God, you, me, a couple of fucking candlesticks. Dude, that's a whole afternoon of fun. You know, they like, they just were super into each other. And they're super and that, wholesome. that is how, like, Mormons are. Um, like, I used to... I used to be babysat by the Mormons when I was younger. And uh, the family that primarily babysat me had, like, ten kids. And, Damn. Yeah. Um, and it was just one mom, one dad. And the, the, so I didn't know about polygamous Mormons until like way, 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 way later. So that was just a thing that like they didn't talk about in the main. It was, it, it mm. was acted, they acted like it was a completely and utterly different religion. Hmm. All okay. right. Like even the whole thing about polygamy is taken out of this one line in, I think, Book of Mormon or Doctrine and Covenants or Pearl of Great Prize. Like one of the, one of the Mormonism books. And it said something to the effect of a flower cannot reach its full beauty without all of its petals or something like that. And that was taken as you cannot get into the highest level of heaven unless you have at least four wives. Hmm. Four or more. Hmm. Three or more, four or more. Something so, like that. jumping ahead. <clears throat> so, we're just going to jump ahead a little bit because I, I really want to say this and it's from the most uh, recent season. So... Cody says, I've done crazy things to get into heaven. He said shit. Yeah. As, I've done... as his mental capacity declines after they move, he starts cussing a lot more. Yeah, they all do. Like, Janelle told him to go fuck himself. I know. I was, and like, I was like, you like... go, girl. But yeah, he's like, I've done crazy shit to get into heaven. So that made me wonder, like, is he only a polygamist because of that? Like, yeah. Wow. Damn. So anyway... They, um, in the very early stages of the show, they're in Utah. They are at risk of being arrested for polygamy because they've gone public. And so they flee to Las Vegas where they build these fucking super cool custom homes for like yeah. everyone. Well, and okay. they all live like, in a cul-de-sac. So I, I feel like this needs to be addressed because it will come up later. So after they, they flee like overnight, taking all their shit. And initially I was like, wow, that's a really stupid decision that he made to go public um 
because that's not I would never stick my neck out like that and then like later I was like okay like I understand what he's doing and why he's doing it like his visibility and yeah. they want to portray like a functional family where there's no child brides no incest no rape no anything like they I mean sometimes they're shitty to each other but honestly like they're really they're it's not. yeah they, <clears throat> they're better than most families yeah. on a good day and all the their siblings... worst day is as good as most families good days oh yeah all the siblings love each other no matter they which have their... mom they have and all of their moms are fucking amazing like every single mom like late in the very last season they get into where uh, Cody had said something like, oh, well, so-and-so is choosing their kids over me. And then, like, it zeroed to that mom. And she was like, I will 100% of the time choose yeah. my children over everyone. Yeah. And I was like, fuck yeah, dude. And then another another one of the moms said the same. She's like, oh, he said, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's Without like- question did you think you were gonna come before my kids like you're out of your fucking mind right? dude yeah so you know he has this <laughs> idea um he he has this idea because in pol- in their polygamy from what i understand he is the prophet of the family so it's up to him to perform the church services once they break from like the church that they were in in utah and so he considers himself like big shit of fuck mountain you know yeah like when he says shit of fuck mountain yeah like his word is doctrine and i'm i think that's actually a quote that he said and so you realize early on that like no you know what the well and even like being raised more most of the time the female like like yeah the guy was like out making money and stuff but like in pretty much every mormon family that i grew up with the woman was really who ran shit yeah like a hundred fucking percent the guy made the money and was like you know an authority kind of like he was a dad but like a 90s tv dad Mm -hmm. yeah exactly i grew up in like 90s tv world yeah essentially my favorite is 50s tv's dad where the kid comes in and he's like it's looking at me get it away and he's got like a drink and a cigarette in his hand there was two families that were like tv 50s dad and they were kind of like uh, like that's what I imagine fundamental Mormonism oh. is like, and and I I I threw this term out to Megan and she said it's not a real thing, but I feel like it might be a big love thing because I was like, oh, they're fundies, like maybe that was just a TV term. That was absolutely a TV term. But I still think I've of them never as fundies heard of that <laughs> ever in my life. You know, like like funyuns. They like, call each other pligs. Yeah, plague. I don't and think stuff. that probably I could say that. I feel like it would be. Even if I'm not saying in a derogatory term, I feel like it's just not a word I can say. I like, don't know why. I totally get it. No, I totally get it. Like, like I... nobody's ever told me not to. It just feels like I shouldn't. <laughs> so, so yeah. So, the Browns moved to Las Vegas. and Initially, they're split up in different rentals. Yes. That are, like, far apart from each other. And so, that's the first time they all start to live in separate houses. And then they decide, like, this is pretty fucking sweet. Let's all have our own houses. So, they buy a, they buy a cul-de-sac. And like it's, of houses it's and much tribulation to get it. Yeah. And then like once they get it, the financing is kind of shaky because it's like one dude and four chicks. <laughs> and so they're like, oh, how do we do this? And but their real estate agents hella cool. Sorry, I'm taking over. No, no, no. Uh, no, real, that's fine. <laughs> their real estate agents hella cool. And so eventually they all get four houses on equal plots of land. It's in a cul-de-sac. They refer to it as the cul-de-sac. So Robin gets like I think she only had three kids then. Um, yeah, she or did. Or two, and she was pregnant with Solomon. Yeah, because she had Solomon at the house. So she had two. She had or three. Or three, sorry. Yeah. yeah, she had three from a previous marriage that immediately got absorbed um, into the family because that's how it happens in Mormonism. Like, yeah. It doesn't matter who. They were, like, calling him dad and shit. I was like, yeah. uh, what? I know. I, I was like, that's a little soon, but whatever. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, like, that's, Mormonism is very family-centric. Um, and so they all get their own plots of land and their own houses. And, like, Janelle is the sensible one. So she makes oh, yeah. a sensible house, does sensible decisions. Yeah. She's like, no, the kids are doubling up. She's got a ton of kids. She's like, no, the kids are doubling up. They don't all need their own room. Um, uh, Christine, I think, didn't really have much issue with her. She's like, yeah, I just want this. And, you know, and Christine's easy breezy. She's kind of like, just, she's great. She's like, 
she's got the personality of like a nice warm breeze on a spring day in, a, she, in yeah. a meadow now she does have baby <laughs> she has like baby of the family syndrome though because she was she yes. was the last wife yes, to come in does. for a very long time and then when robin came in she was like who this bitch <laughs> yes no and that is absolutely true and there was some rifts between the two for well it was one-sided rifts yeah um, she had a problem with Robin and Robin was like, you love me, right? She's like, mm-hmm. yeah, Robin was like, I just want to be your friend. Um, and then the only thing that was kind of fucking everything up because they all had a budget on their houses. Like the, I don't know, let's, they had like a soup budget. Does that make sense? Like where yeah. all of like, it's a big mass amount of money and they can all draw from it as they wish. God. But this is all the money they have for it. And so if one person wants, like, gold-plated fixtures and shit, that's drawing from another person's shit. Yeah. And so everyone was pretty well fine with what they had. Um, Janelle was trying to make the most sensible decisions. I think that she had the most kids at the time. Mm-hmm. and <clears throat> Or the most kids at home. Because uh, all the kids were at home at that point. And so she has all these fucking kids. Mary, who has one kid who is a teenager i believe at this point mary wants like a wet bar she wants the more expensive everything and once again she only has one kid janelle has let's say 10 yeah and seven seven that's close very fucking close janelle has like the most amount of fucking kids and she's like okay like i'm making like sensible decisions and i'm kind of you know making my kids sleep two or three to a bedroom meanwhile you have like five fucking bedrooms and you want a wet bar always mary has the five bedrooms yeah she's like well i would have had more kids if it were up to me cool well but you didn't exactly like we're not trying to put you in a tiny house in the backyard but, like, you yeah. don't need five bedrooms. <laughs> We're not making you, know? you live in a tent, bro. Yeah. But, yeah. <clears throat> you don't need five bedrooms and a wet bar and, like, you know, marble shit. So she's feeling a little dejected. And she goes and she finds some comfort online. Uh-huh. She's like, my whole family fucking, they're being buttholes. I just want my wet bar. I want my one thing that comforts me when I don't have, like, my, I didn't, I have empty womb syndrome. And, like, I just want a wet bar and they don't get it. And so she ended up getting catfished. Um... Now, when they talk about the big catfishing thing, you can clearly tell she thought it was a man. She was head over heels for this dude. She was fucking in. Well, yeah. She was down to leave. So here's the thing. I saw her, like, I saw her starting to take steps toward it early on. So there was a few things, like, that I knew when I started watching it. I don't know. I think, like, season seven or so. What's the season after they all move in? So... She got catfished in season 11. Okay, season 11. So, like, season 11 is when it gets brought Sorry, up, 10. but in, like, season Sorry. 8 or yes. so is when she actually starts to be catfished. Yeah. And so, like, I must have started back up around season 7 or so. And keep in mind, I marathoned for the last two weeks nothing <laughs> but Sister Wives. Oh Zero <laughs> things other than Sister Wives. This dominated my life. That's why I'm like, no, 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 this happened, this happened. <laughs> and um, at one point I was like, you should watch something else for just like, just a couple hours. She's like, nope, nope, I'm, only I'm powering through. <laughs> yeah, it drove my husband fucking nuts. Um, and so, like, I started to see her making moves. Like, when she legally divorced Cody... So that he could adopt Robin's kids. Like, okay, keep in mind, I've been in shitty relationships before. And Mary and I are very similar in the sense of, like, she craves security. She understands her situation. But, like, she was starting to to stack up the fucking dominoes. Yeah. Like, she was definitely stacking the deck. And so, anyway, she gets legally divorced from Cody. So Robin's kids can get adopted, which is dope as fuck. That's very sweet. It's very sweet. But she's building an exit strategy. Absolutely. Strategy. Absolutely she is. Um, and then, let's see, there was that, there was the way that she was acting, she started to withdraw from the family. Yeah, you can tell she was just like, I'm out. Oh yeah, she was checking out fully, and she was definitely passing the baton Mm -hmm. to Robin, and you can tell, like, even when they get married, she is not very close with, Mary isn't very close with any of the other sister wives, she gets almost immediately very close with Robin, which is nice, it's nice to see Mary happy, she's fucking miserable. She's miserable Because of her circumstances, Yeah. yeah. Like, you can tell she doesn't feel valued as a person and she isn't they dismiss yeah. her well and they yeah. you know what's fucked up i agree with you they dismiss her because she could only have one child i think that's how it started uh-huh and they were like great so we're pumping out seven eight nine twelve kids 
between us and you had one, you know, I think that's probably I don't where... think that that's a spoken thing and I don't think oh, that yeah. they're aware of it. Totally But not. that's, yeah. Well, and then also Mary is reacting to how she feels that they feel. Mm-hmm. So even if they don't feel like that, in her mind, they do. Because she has And so she kind of also yeah. puts herself in that place. Exactly. She views it as something that she is... She feels other. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And... A lot of the things that she does is uh, kind of acting out because of her otherness. Yeah. I feel. Yeah. Oh, totally. And so, you know, like. I, it's, it's not. I would have done the same shit. Except yeah. I would have actually. Even if I was found out I was getting catfished, I still would have bounced. Like, I, I feel like at that point I still would have bounced. But she doesn't. She finds out she's being catfished. She comes clean to the family, and they're all like, dude, we knew something was up. You've been mm-hmm. acting weird for, like, a while. She's like, oh, here's what happened. And her daughter is, like, pissed immediately because oh, her daughter had yeah. told her, like, the whole fucking time. Her daughter Mariah had told her the whole time, like, hey, you're being fucking catfished. And she was like, no, no way. And so, like, initially, and this is kind of the beginning of the end of Cody being a good dude. Mm-hmm. Like, Cody talks to their daughter Mariah and it's like, look, like, this happened to your mom, you know, we're moving past it as a family. I know that you're still stuck on it. And she's like, Dad, there's so much you don't know. And he's like, well, you know what? I don't need to. It's mm-hmm. fine. Like, I am as culpable as your mom. I wasn't giving her attention. She was lonely. She was sad. She was alone. And so he's being just a really good dude about all of it. Yeah, because in the meantime, he's been pumping out new kids with Robin. Yeah. You know, adopting her kids, making her feel a part of the family. And Which I understand, you know. like, you have to make a person feel a part of the family and stuff. Like, I get that. But she definitely is, like, the new shiny favorite thing. Mm-hmm. And it's not <laughs> even, like, it's not even just being catty or speculatory. Like, just through his actions, he shows that. Yeah. And so then after after the catfishing, when everyone's kind of trying to bring Mary back in the fold, as Mormons do, they're usually real good about that, trying to bring you back into the fold. Um, and stuff is trying, is starting to get repaired between Mary and Janelle. Now, Janelle was the second wife and she and Mary had known each other for quite a while beforehand. Yeah. They had been friends. And for Janelle... like a, 10 years or something. Yeah. Before Mary met Cody. Even, oh yeah. They were like friends. And Janelle was a monogamous. She grew up in a monogamous family. Mm-hmm. Um, after she married into the Brown family much later. Her... No. It was actually the marriage went through before she and Cody got married. They were courting barely. Oh, is that what it was? Okay. Mary's mom and Cody's dad got married just, I mean. Janelle's mom. Or sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Janelle's mom (laughs) got married just, I'm talking a cunt hair before they did. That's right. Okay. So yeah. So even though she grew up. I thought it was after too. I did. Yeah. That's what it said. So uh, yeah. So she grew up a monogamist and as she's getting ready to marry Cody, her mom married Cody's dad. So now they're like... Which, he's a handsome guy. I get it. <laughs> Cody's dad. He looked like a real, like, just cool dude. <laughs> so, you know, there's all this stuff that they are constantly... They're trying to repair their family after the big catfishing episode. And you can see that Cody's getting more and more and He's more thinking about it more. heard about it, yeah. Well, because I think that it's like he was initially kind of cool about... Because Mary had told him to kind of, like distance a little bit and Mm -hmm. mary says that it's because like these people knew where her daughter went to school and oh she also had empty nest syndrome at this point uh so she was completely fucking alone she said it's because these people knew all this stuff about her and they said she'd be sorry and da 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 they're blackmailing her right and so like i i understand her alibi um but, yeah, she had told Cody kind of to, like, step away a little bit. And so Cody kind of took that as a full fuck you. And keep in mind, like, both Mary and I have thoughts in our head. And then when it gets to making the thoughts come out of our mouths, they come out vastly fucking different. Mm-hmm. As my mom always said, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Mm-hmm. And I'm shitty at saying things sometimes, especially if it's important that I don't fuck it up. I will 100% of the time make it come out. Like, I'll try to say something comforting and it'll come out as fuck you, I'm more important. So, like... <laughs> it i get it you know i think that it was enough people cody was being hella cool about it um cody also this needs to be said has undiagnosed severe bipolar disorder dude 
you can fucking this is see my it. thesis and i will prove it throughout the rest of this episode he is waving his bipolar flag and he's screaming i'm having a manic episode yeah this he's... is and this is coming from somebody who's bipolar and has a partner who's bipolar like i can fucking see this shit uh, I can fucking smell it when it's coming up. It's oh, in yeah. the wind, you know? Oh, yeah. So so and after that, they decide, let's all reconnect. We'll move to Flagstaff. Well, yeah, Things I, will get better. I think it's because he, yeah, he was losing his grip. Yep. Uh, he's got a lot of control issues. And um, you can he see. He was losing his grip from enough people telling him, no, you should be more angry about this. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see that he's sort of struggling and he's sort of spiraling into this bipolar manic episode. Yeah, because he's already, he is one for schemes. This is continuing <laughs> our theme on guys <laughs> with schemes. Inadvertently, yeah. Uh, he's got fucking, all the time he's got schemes. Um... He had tried to run it by them before that they needed to move. Um, and they were like, uh, we just fucking got here, bro. Yeah. And apparently we learn later on in the episodes that like, apparently they move a lot. Yeah. Robin didn't sign up for this. Robin signed up for stability. And so she's all like, uh, wait, excuse me, what? <laughs> and he's doing what I always do, which is like, well, things are really bad here. So if we move someplace new, they won't be really bad there because all the bad stuff will stay here. Which is never true. It never happens that it's way. It's like, oh, your relationship is like kind of on the rocks right now. Have a baby. Get married. Yeah. Move. Have buy a, a car. Maybe. Do all of those things that make everything <laughs> monumentally fucking worse. Yeah. And so here is one reason, one of the every reason, that moving to Flagstaff is fucking terrible. Because you remember how I said earlier that, like, the relationship between all of them was pretty stressed when they were all living apart and yeah. it kind of, like, drew them apart from each other? This amplifies it by 6,000 million because they moved before in an us versus them scenario. Yes. Which we are he, he is talk. want to form those, by the way. He's very comfortable in those. He, he likes yes, those. Yes, he loves adversity. That's his favorite thing. And so if he, if it's not an extrinsic thing, like the government is actively against us, then it's this one member of the family yeah. This one thing that he always is uh, very quick to form us versus them. And so this one was uh, when they moved to Vegas, it it separated them distance wise. And like they all did figure out, man, we actually do like living separately. But they um, they still came together as a family because nobody in the family was the enemy. Yeah. The enemy was Utah and their laws on polygamy. Yeah. Um, but then when they moved to, uh, Flagstaff, which I was very surprised all the wives got onto it almost immediately because none of them wanted to. They were in such a good place yeah. in Nevada. They all had beautiful homes. They had a huge joined backyard. They were um, so close to their they family were so in close, Utah yeah. and each other. Like they were yeah, just Yeah, because Nevada drive. was right there. Yeah, I think, what, like three hour drive or something. Yeah. Um, and so... Like, Mary, before they move, sorry, rewind, before they move, Mary wants to buy this B&B that um, the house itself had been in her family for, like, three generations. Her great-great-grandfather built the house in, like, the 18-somethings, and her grandmother actually had grown up in the house, and her mother had remembered even visiting the house when she was a little girl. And so it meant a lot to her. Mary's very sentimental anyway. Yeah. And so Mary was like, look, I have all of this together. I'm consulting you guys. Is it okay if I buy this? And Cody, who already kind of had written her off in my mind uh, as being kind of divorced from the family. Yeah. Because she's spitting mad, like, divorced vibes right now. Oh, yeah. She just is. And he was like, us versus her. That was exactly it. It started yeah. out as us versus her. Um, and so she was like, Hey, you know, I have all of this together. All I need is I think $8,000, right? Some, some, some I think it was $8,000. Yeah. yeah. And, um, he was like, well, I need to talk to the family. And she's like, yeah, no, like by all means, like that's what I'm saying. And so they had asked her like all these things, like, are we going to be equity shareholders, this and that? And she said, no, just not even thinking about it. And then like it spiraled into this whole big deal. Why aren't we equal shareholders? And she's like, I mean... I just said no because I didn't know what the fuck you meant by that. Like, if you want to be, you can totally. I'm. I didn't mean to disclude you at all. But by then, they're like, "Fuck this, we're." Oh out. yeah, by exactly. And so, like, Cody had this other business with I forget who, and he was like, "Well, I can draw equity from that, 
and see. And so, like, this was partly, I think, him trying to be like, oh, wait, it's in Utah. And admittedly, when anybody went to that B&B, they were like, wow, this feels like home. Yeah. And they were enchanted by it. Uh, and Cody also was the same. And then when he got back with all the sister wives, then he started poo pooed a little bit. And he was like, yeah, I pulled all this money out of my business, but, you know, the family budget needs it. Yeah. So, and this is after he pulled out, oh, you know, I, I just looked over the family budget. The family budget needs it. So, sorry, Mary, we can't give you this $4,000. And she's like, okay. And I see the wheels turning in her head as they would in mine. I'm like, okay, how am I going to make this happen? And everyone else takes this as, well, she's already left us once by catfishing. Is she just going to, to fuck off and live in Parowan, Utah, where this B&B is? And that's not actually her, she doesn't want to be in Utah. She's like, no, Utah said fuck you. In my neurodivergent brain, if I hear fuck you, I say no fuck you bigger. Yeah. And she's like, I just want my family home back. This yeah. has nothing to do with moving And away. that was precisely it. And so she, uh, she pretty much takes... And talks to the lender again. She's able to get four thousand dollars down instead of eight thousand. She buys a home yeah. with a, a cloud of glitter and middle fingers. Yeah, and it's pretty good. Nice. She didn't do it particularly as a fuck you, but a little bit. Um, and then the gall of this motherfucker, Cody, is like, you know, I really I presented her with this opportunity to grow by the family not helping her out and it really and he like tried to act like he orchestrated the whole fucking thing and it's like no she bought that place much to your fucking chagrin yeah the whole family was surprised that she was able to get it together and she fucking did oh but i gave her the opportunity to grow to teach herself that she can do this she on her own it was it. like fuck you You're cody welcome. Fuck what? you. That's like if I hit Erin in the hand hard enough to break her dominant hand no. and then she had to learn how to write with her other hand. Bad that's nasty. like me saying <laughs> I presented Erin with the opportunity to grow her skill set. And if I hadn't done this, she wouldn't have learned all this. It's like, well, no, that's yeah. not how that works. Yeah. No, he tried. He's always scheming. He's always Yeah, he's scheming. looking for the spin. And this is the beginning of where Cody starts to turn into a shitty, shitty dude. He's like, well, now we have this money. Let's take it and move to Flagstaff. Yeah, and it's like, okay, so you couldn't give the money to Mary, but you can spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on moving. To this place that you went once for a fucking business meeting. Was that it? Uh, oh, yeah. my Lord. Or, like, some sort of, like, <laughs> fucking business get-together. Which, what, like, what does he do for business, you ask? Don't know. Don't know. It's like the Frank Reynolds company where they're it like, is, what do you yeah. make? And he's like, money. Wolf Cola? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, there's, like, an entire season of them going back and forth about, will they, won't they, will they, won't they? They fucking do. Spoiler alert, they move it is so terrible. to Flagstaff. It's so annoying. So at this point... And they have no family and no friends in Flagstaff. Mm -mm. That needs to be known also. Yeah, no support system. Um, and so they move to Flagstaff, and they, they try to settle in, and then they're mm. like... They don't find places to rent and oh, then yeah. move? No, no. They just show up. Their, their plan is they are going to buy a plot of land which they do which they do uh cough money pit cough <laughs> um so their plan is they're going to buy a plot of land and they're going to build four houses which, which is like isn't that what the fuck you just got done doing yeah. now um they're going to buy four houses and it's going to be great and they're going to live out there um, and they're trying to recreate the cul-de-sac. Yeah. But in the meanwhile, they're going to have to uproot the children. Who are all, like, in their last years of high school. Well, not all, but, like, three of them are in their last years of high school, and then the rest of them are in, like, junior high and yeah, grade school. the tough ones. Um, and so they have, at this time, 14 children living at home. Uh, or 15. And... So instead of moving with literally any plan of like, we're going to live here, we're going to have rentals, like their plan was they were going to have rentals for two years and then they were going to move into the houses. They needed the profits from the house to build their new houses. And so um, 
uh, they had talked to their real estate agent who had initially sold them their houses and their real estate agent was like these houses are going so fast now keep in mind the time of year um i want to say it's like late summer right early yeah. or midsummer let's say it's july uh so they're saying oh yeah these houses are gonna go up if once you put them on the market, it's going to sell inside of 30 days. And so they're like, oh, shit. So we have to get all of our shit out and moved in 30 days and then put the houses on the market. So the first person to put their house on the market is Janelle. Um, and so finding a, a rentals for all of these people is fucking excruciating. Robin, who could just have like, so she gets one rental. It's great. Has to move out on um, when they're doing the second rental. She could just have like four bedrooms and th so they had even said all of the houses are four or less bedrooms that are for rent now keep in mind it's her and cody which i understand is one room her um oldest son which i understand is one room two daughters who are like about three years separated they can share a fucking room yeah um and then the two little kids who are about a year or two separated one's a boy one's a girl but they're little like you know three and newborn or something they can share a fucking room that's four bedrooms motherfucker yeah um and she's like no i need at least six why in the living fuck do you need at least six yeah you fucking don't um so robin starts to be the problem child with all that shit she sorry i had to go into that i was so no mad about no that. it was super, <laughs> yeah no it's super i know annoying. it's a complete tangent but that's okay the, the whole <laughs> process is very annoying I, the reason i'm pushing this forward is because i want to get to when shit gets bad which oh is... okay in that case i can push that forward real fast so oh yeah broad yeah. strokes so um instead of having any fucking plan when they move out there they're like god i'll take care of it and they just move they dead fall and move all their shit out there oh. having no place to fucking live so janelle is the first person to put her house on the market because she's got it all clean janelle is very pragmatic she's got it all cleaned all ready all everything right and now, she's a real estate agent yes and oh. she is so this is i think about august that they put everything on the market they move to flagstaff get the kids in school with like days to spare yeah. all the kids are pissed off and bummed out they all have whiplash essentially oh yeah absolutely um and so they all move out there having no friends no infrastructure no anything after already having done a traumatic move like you know six years prior <sighs> and he yeah he's a real piece of shit this is where cody starts to be a piece of shit he acts like a real fucking infant about stuff and I'm sorry if that's derogatory to infants. <laughs> like, seriously, the way yeah. that he is acting, holy fuck. Um, and so anyway, they move out there, no plan, no nothing. Janelle's house goes on the market first. Um, I don't know what's going on with Christine's house, so I'm not going to speak to that. Uh, Robin, like two months later, still has stuff in her house. And it hasn't been cleaned out at all. Yeah. Um, she clearly does not want to move. Oh, yeah, Robin very much does not want to move, which, yeah, dude, I get it. I don't want to fucking move either. I hate moving. Um, Mary's house, I think, is ready. It just needs to be, like, cleaned or whatever, like, the deep cleaning that you do. Uh, and so they don't, they're not able to get all the houses on the market at the same time. And the houses don't fucking sell. Nope. Um, I So Robin finally gets her house sorted out in, like october or something or november and her house actually sells almost immediately like it's on the market for two weeks and it sells <laughs> um so everyone else is very dejected about that now keep in mind they need all this money to build these houses they in need the staff yeah in flagstaff and so they just have this empty it's an undeveloped lot mind you so when they had moved oh, to yeah right i've been watching homestead rescue so you get, oh yeah that's right i get it they did they check is there water on the property it's Are they on a sewer it's on a flood path it's on a flood Ooh. so <laughs> cody is definitely one of those guys that he will pay sticker price and not a penny more he's that because <laughs> Uh, I saw the real estate yeah. agent is very good. And she was like, well, you got to think if you're interested, probably other people are too. And yeah. it's like, okay. Um, so he, he acted fast on this hot land deal. <laughs> and he, uh, so it's completely undeveloped. There was like two or three different ones. One of them was like developed-ish. They were like building houses and stuff out there. 
Um, and this one was just a chunk of fucking land. And but most of the family fell in love with that chunk of land. And so that's where they ended up buying. And this whole thing was only supposed to take two years in theory. Well, two years later, nothing has happened. No, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah, which I understand building and stuff, but that's not the pandemic isn't the reason nothing's happening. No, but this is where I get real excited. They had to buy like two different houses. Okay, okay, Christine bought immediately the house that she lived in just because she couldn't find a rental that suited her and it was a good deal and yada 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 okay cool that makes sense whatever um because you can just use that as a rental later on yeah and then robin gets in this situation where the uh she has to move i think she and mary have to move at the same time for the same reason because the owner airbnb wait what the house that her okay so robin was so confident that they got an Airbnb. That's how sure they were they were going to be able to find a rental. The house that she lived in for one year mm-hmm. was an Airbnb. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sister how wife. much did that fucking cost? All that sister wife money. <laughs> On Robin. Jesus she, Christ. This yeah. house admittedly was the most gorgeous house I have ever seen. Ten bedrooms. The one they ended up buying, right? Did they? Oh, that one also. Did they buy the house that? What? Okay, so the one that they're in now that they ended up buying, uh-huh. that's the one they Airbnb'd. So maybe I'm thinking of a different one. Okay. So. Oh no, the so the house that they initially moved into from, mm-hmm. uh, Nevada, was fucking beautiful. Oh, maybe that's the one that got sold out from under us. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, and then the next one they got was like an Airbnb because the emergency needed a place to live. That had her fucking 12 bedrooms with the gold the day or whatever the fuck her laundry list of wants were. And that one, they ended up buying from the person who was using it as an Airbnb. Okay, so... Okay, that's interesting. Because um, I know that they were in a situation where they were rent... They were, they were going to buy the house... Um, but they needed it then. Yeah. And so they were renting it from the person before they could buy it. Yes. Yeah. Waiting for everything to go through. So I don't know if that's necessarily an Airbnb situation, but was it an Airbnb before? It was. Huh. They found it as an Airbnb and then they amended a contract and then they bought it. But like, damn. So you're throwing all your fucking cheddar at your hot wife. Oh. Your young wife. Oh, absolutely. Your fertile wife. Absolutely. Like, so... They get to Flagstaff, the pandemic hits, they're all living in their separate places, they're not out on the property, and shit starts to crumble. Mm. Tidy rewind. I don't understand why. They didn't just put in an offer on the place she was already living at when they were like, we want to put this on the market. Yeah, 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 right? Should have bought that one. All their shit's already there. Yeah, totally. Sorry. No, 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 it's fine. (laughs) I mean, maybe there's things we don't know, but it doesn't make any goddamn sense. Mm Mm-mm. So, this is where I get real happy. <laughs> real, and not real happy because I enjoy the demise of a family that loves each other. Fuck no, but real happy because these women are finally like, Cody, you go fuck yourself. So, during the pandemic, Cody essentially h- hunkers down with Robin because Christine huh. and Janelle are like, dude, we're, we have adult children who have relationships and jobs and things they want to do school. and school and like they're wearing masks and they're being safe, but they're not going to just sit at home all day. And Robin's like, well, I'm going to sit at home all day, do nothing and quarantine from everyone because my kids have compromised immuno. Which I systems, understand. Which I totally get. Those extra steps, like they're like sanitizing the mail. Oh my God, that's so dumb. That is super stupid, especially like now what we know. Yeah. But it's not... Like, okay, very early pandemic, a lot of their rules made sense, but, like, they're at, like, this stage of pandemic where, like, we know a lot about it. It was just barely pre-vaccine. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so... And it's like, we already know a lot about it. And yeah. Janelle and, and uh, uh, Christine's family were, yeah, they were, you know, doing, like, the regular CDC stuff, like sanitizing yeah. your hands, wearing masks, like washing your hands all the time. Yeah, not like... Not making out with strangers, not, not going on grinder. fucking toilets. Yeah, right. not going on grinder. <laughs> like, getting, you know, I don't know what their hot take is on vaccines, and I don't want to know. Yeah, I don't you know? want to know. I might 
I might not like it. I feel like Mormons I'm not are usually going pretty to. good on, on being vaccinated, though. That's true. They have a lot of kids, and they don't want them to die. <laughs> yeah, they learned a long time ago that kids <laughs> kids die pretty easily in situations yeah. where there's a pandemic. And so, <laughs> but my favorite part is watching, like, Cody hunkered down at Robin's house. And he's like, well, I can't come see you, Janelle, because you're not following my rules. And she's like, what the fuck are your rules? And he's like, what? Can't hear you over here at Robin's house. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, oh, what's that, Christine? Oh, I can't hear you either because I'm at Robin's house. And they're like, dude, fuck you. Whatever. We're going to, our kids miss each other. We miss each other. We're going to get together. In the meantime, nobody gives a fuck what Mary's doing. Nobody yeah. checks oh. in on her. You know, it she broke my heart. went with them and she went to, you know, she's trying to get her place back in the family. And they're just like, is she still a, is she still a thing? Is she still part of our family? Dude, they <laughs> do this so extremely. Like on yeah. her and Cody's 30th wedding anniversary. Not only does Cody not know that it's their 30th, he acts like, oh, I don't, what, 31st? Like, yeah. he acts like it's not even a fucking thing. Uh, they go kind of pseudo camping, and he says all this mean shit to her. He's so mean. Like, like, he's been stewing for fucking years about the catfish stuff, and now he's ready to talk about it. Now but, he's like, ready passive to Like, passive-aggressively, he doesn't even really address it. He's just like, we're not going to have an intimate, like... More or less, he's like, I'm not going to bang you. I'm not really going to hang out with you. I don't want to kiss you. If you, you. want to be my friend, it's going to be on my terms and my terms only. Yeah. And you're going to have to do a lot to get this back. And But we're never going to... But gonna... you're probably not going to get it back. Yeah, we're never going to get back to where we were. We're only going to be friends. And he said that he doesn't love her. And if she wants to be loved, she should try being more lovable. Yep. Ouch. You know who said that to me one time? My ex-husband. And then you stabbed him. <laughs> like, that is the meanest shit ever. Meanest shit ever. And here oh, she's Oh, he like, told Christine that he's not attracted to her anymore. Oh, yeah. And that she murdered their intimacy. He's such a fucking drama queen. Mm -hmm. She murdered our intimacy by venting about our marital problems to other members of the family. Well, you wouldn't fucking talk to her. Mm -hmm. She didn't do shit. So... Strike one. He shits all over Mary, which is totally That's unforgivable for. in unforgivable. my fucking book. Strike two, he basically tells Christine, like, you're gross. Um, and, and she is so not gross. She's, she's really pretty. Beautiful. She's beautiful. They're all beautiful, except for Robin, who I have my... She's got a quagmire jaw. <sighs> she's got a quagmire jaw. She's got, like, a crackly old witch nose. And she is... She looks like the grandma from Dinosaurs. Yeah, she does. And 100% she cries too much, which I cry too much, and it drives me fucking crazy. I actually cries. don't think that she cries very much. I think that that's just an Aaron thing. That might just be an Aaron thing. And I'm uncomfortable with people's emotions, yeah. so I'm pretty sure I would have pegged if she cried too much. She, she cries. I think that you just don't like her because, like... She's you... too much like me. Right, yeah. and I don't see that at all. I um, only see it in, like, her weird... She reminds me of how I used to be. Oh, I get you. That's, that's yeah. what it is. And it's I hate the me person I used to be, too. I hate that person. I hate that there's people out there that will always remember me as that person. I hate that there's people out there who act like I used to act and think it's okay. Because I used yeah. to think it was okay, and it wasn't okay. Me, too. Me, too. It was like unchecked mental illness, toxic relationships, no self-esteem. Like, there are so many things that made that Aaron, and I am not her. And, and you know... I don't need to prove to anyone I'm not her anymore, and it's fine because I'm in a different phase of my life. But I do hate that someone out there is like, man, that bitch is crazy. She called <laughs> she called my house like 400 times. I told her I would call her when I got home. I just didn't tell her I was going to stay an extra four days. And so it's like, well, I was worried about you. I thought you were you, dead. I thought you were dead. You didn't tell me you weren't coming home. Um, but I, you know, anyway, that's a me thing. Those are my <laughs> issues to unpack. But like, so, okay. So he shits all over Mary who does not deserve it. Who ever is trying really hard to be her best self. And I think she's fucking awesome except for the Lula Rose stuff. But you know what? Yeah. She, has, she likes MLMs. That's she true. likes MLMs and that's fine for her. But I, you know, she, she's and she doesn't funny. really, yeah, she doesn't really include it in like the rest of everything. So yeah. Uh, um, she's not shilling the diet shakes like Janelle and Christine. I know. So yeah. I, I follow them on Instagram and I'm like thinking about not just because, yeah, like it's always some scheme with them. And I'm like, I love seeing, like, I only follow it because I like seeing them smile. Yeah. Like I like I seeing too. them happy. <laughs> I want to see them happy. I want to see them succeed. So I think that this last season was the best season ever because yes. Mary was like, you know what? 
fuck Mary you. got her groove. Yeah, like, she's she's like, smiling. She's oh wine she's mom. She's cool she's auntie. Happy. Her she's... daughter came out and initially she was like, uh, uh, because she hasn't like changed. Yeah. And she was like, I feel like shit for like not reacting like I sh- I should have. She was like, I just didn't know what to say. Dude, she is and. She, like, so asked supportive. questions and tried to do better. Yeah. She tried to learn better so she could do better. And now she's, like, this amazing, like, ma. She's, like, down for her fucking kid. Yeah. She there was so many everywhere things. everywhere for them. Yeah. There was, like, even when the pandemic started and Cody was, like, you're not going to move them. And she was, like, oh, what uh, now? the fuck I'm not. That's my daughter. My daughter asked me to do this. And that's, like, that. that's actually kind of a reoccurring thing. Like, her... Her daughter asked her to march on Washington. She's like, I mean, I don't really have a dog in this fight that I know of, but my daughter asked me to, and so I'm going to be there. Yeah, she went to the women's march to yeah. be with Mariah. Like, everything these... she does is for that, and oh, I yeah. love it. All these women are choosing their children, which yeah. I'm so <laughs> fucking there for. And he's, like, seriously got his nose out of joint about it. He's, oh, he's like, got it, yeah. Eh, I'm supposed to be number one here, gays. Um, and at one yeah, point... Yeah, they're like, no. No. And so Janelle... He goes to Janelle and he's like, I'm going to stand here at the edge of your property while she's like raking leaves or something. And he's like, I can't come any closer because you're not controlling the boys. You're letting them go out and see their girlfriends and stuff. And she's like, they're fucking adults. He goes, well, you need to kick them out of the house. She's like, I'm not going to kick my kids out of the house in a pandemic. Where are they going to go? Yeah. And also one of them is like, he's like saving money to buy a place. Yeah. And he's like 90% of the way there. Yeah. And then her other son is, well, it's Gabe. Yeah. She's like, um... She's like, dude, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to kick the kids out of the house for you. And he he just, he was like, well, maybe we should all move back to Utah. She's like, go for you it. You can. I'm staying here, right? I'm like, fuck yeah. Christine's like, you know what? I'm better when you're not around. Yeah. I do better. We have more fun. I feel yeah, better about fun. myself. Yeah. Like, you know what? I think I'm good. That episode where he came over to her house and she had all his shit packed ah! up. And he was like. After he told them that yes. they, he told her. I think that this is actually the last episode. Um, I don't watch the tell-all episodes. Uh, he told her that they were no longer going to have an intimate sexual relationship or like anything like that. And he had said he doesn't want, I believe this was about Mary, that he doesn't want to participate in hookup culture and sex is only for procreation and romantic things. Yeah. So he's whittled it down to he's only banging Robin. That's it, yeah. Right? And so Christine packs his shit, puts it in the garage, and she's like, dude, get the fuck out. And she told him that she doesn't want him staying the night in her bed because her bed is for special times (laughs) and they're not having any. I fucking love that Ah! so much. I love it so much. So... You know, here he's getting, oh, he's he's so rejected. And he he's like, is this just happening. a phase? I don't know how to react to this. Yeah. And it's like, bitch, this isn't just a no. phase. You burnt, you done burned every bridge because you favored, you had a favorite in this race. And, and he keeps yelling, have. there's no head wife. Yeah. And so then cut to Robin, who you expect to be like, oh, I'm finally number one. I got him all to myself. And she's like, I did not sign up for this. She's terrified. I did not sign up for a full-time husband at my house. I wanted the family. I wanted the support and the culture. And he's here every goddamn day. I'm smelling his farts. I'm cooking his meals. He's clipping his toenails in my fucking kitchen sink. I'm projecting. She didn't say any of that. Maybe that's just a me house thing. <laughs> in the kitchen sink. <laughs> I don't understand. How would Dave get his foot up that I high? don't know, but there's always toenails in the kitchen sink. <laughs> Are you sure they're not macaroni? <laughs> I am a hundred percent sure because I, I bit one and it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I didn't. <laughs> she did. Dude, I was facetiming with Megan this morning, which is on her way over. I was going to brush my teeth and I looked down and I was like, "Is that a hair in my toothbrush?" And I pulled it out and I was like, "Oh my god, it's one of my husband's beard hairs." Like, you know, is it? And and we already played the game of is it a pube or is it a beard hair? And it's like, oh, I was like, I'm forever unclean. <laughs> And so, yeah, so Robin's just like, she's like, I did not sign on for a full-time husband. You guys are supposed to be taking your share with him. And he's just, yeah. he's just coming on my walls. He's so, eating my fucking Weight Watchers food. I guess that this is our Am Night Shyamalan twist is we act like we're so against Robin and she's pulling all the strings. And this was actually my M Night Shyamalan twist too, because that was how I was thinking until... They, like, actually started doing closer interviews with Robin when she was alone. And you could tell the relief in her eyes of even being alone because she hadn't been alone in nine months. Yeah. And so we're nine months into the pandemic, I think, at this point. And, like, so they had asked before he was super, like, mean to everybody. 
um, they had asked, like, well, what can we do? And because they were like, well, you have a nanny come over all the time. At like, Robin's what house. is it that yeah. the nanny is doing that we're not doing that makes it so the nanny can come over and we can't? And so he gives them these rules. And a lot of them are common sense. Wash your hands. Wear masks. Maintain social distance. Okay, already doing all that, you know. And, and then there's a few crazy ones. The crazy like, ones sanitize that are left the over. mail. Change your clothes when you come in the house. Okay, now I was yeah. actually doing that when I was, I was working still. in customer service. Like yeah. when we didn't, it was about at that time in the pandemic where like I would come home and just I wouldn't touch anything. I'd go right to the washing machine. I'd strip my clothes off, drop them directly in the washing machine. And take a shower, wash my hands, brush my teeth, and then say hi to everybody. And, and still, to this and, day, when Dave comes home, when DJ comes home, the first thing they do, they're like, I'm going to wash my hands. I, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's the very first thing I do after, I mean, even if I'm just fucking, I drive somewhere and I drive back and I didn't get out of my car. Like, I still, yeah. it's a habit now, it's which good, it's a good habit. It's a good habit. Um, <laughs> But, like, yeah, and some of them are, you know, yeah, a little bit more extreme, but, like, I get it because they have immune-compromised people in the house. So, yeah, like, the stripping your clothes, okay, I kind of get that. But, yeah, like, washing, or not washing, uh, sanitizing it's all of the, I so like, so every real. item, leaving everything out for 24 hours, like, all this stuff that I was like, ooh. That's a little fucking excessive for practical life. Yeah. Like, I can understand with Robin's kids it being a little bit easier because it's really obvious that Robin has a lot of past trauma and so she's a little bit more compliant with stuff because she's scared. Like, her fear kind of bubbles up. But you can tell her ex-husband was very, very, very abusive yeah. because she is so compliant, because she's scared what happens if she's not. Mm -hmm. Cody has... I don't think he would ever actually hurt anyone, but he's very emotionally manipulative. Very. And so I, I can see that he has temper tantrums my yeah. husband also has temper tantrums has and they're not pleasant rage. yeah um but he would never fucking hit me or alex or the dog or anything um and so i think that cody's a lot the same way where like when he's mad he's just a real pain in the ass to deal with but she's used to it not being just that yeah and all of her past experiences of her life have dictated that if somebody gets to that point they're going to fucking hit you yeah and so she wants to prevent that and prevent her because her daughter's got this massive panic um, uh, disorder. disorder and she will literally shut the fuck down. Like she cannot move. She's hyperventilating in a ball, like literally cannot fucking move. Yeah. And so um, I can understand just for everything, her just being like, OK, OK, it's just extra steps, whatever. It's just extra steps to keep us safe. But like having older kids, it's harder to do that. Yeah. And so um. Yeah, like, I I can see once she was alone and she was like, yeah, all these rules are all Cody's rules. This is all this stuff that, like, he makes us do all the time. And she's just thousand yards staring. Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm, like, I kind of felt bad after they had all those talks, like, after they had all those bad discussions, especially when... Uh, the when two of the wives janelle and christine had said that they wouldn't be home for thanksgiving uh that they would be going to their sisters their two different sisters houses uh respectively or no i think christine was going to one of her kids houses um yeah. and like i can tell the fear in robin's eyes <laughs> yeah because i knew that once she and cody got alone it was gonna get bad yeah. Not between she and him, but she, he would like tighten it up with all of the unchecked rage and control issues yeah. because, um, yeah. And so that's when I actually was like, oh shit, Robin isn't pulling these strings. This isn't Robin. This is the shit that Robin does because she doesn't want her kids to not be able to see their dad for nine months like all of the other sister wives. Yeah. Because um, her kids are little. Yeah. They're tiny. Yeah. And, but all the same, she's like, I can't fucking deal with this guy. Yeah. Like, this is too goddamn much right now. Yeah. So the one but that all the other wants... wives who have older kids are like, fuck it. I don't need your support. My kids are almost out of the house. I can earn my own way. And she's like fuck i'm stuck yeah a hundred percent a hundred percent he forgot to ask the wife that he is trying to lock down with monogamy if she wanted to be monogamous with him mm -hmm. <laughs> he just assumed he just assumes everyone wants to spend time with him and, oh yeah and to quote him if he wants them to spend time with them he should act like a person who people want to spend time with yeah he really should if he wants to be loved he needs to be lovable and he's yeah. fucking not right now no when his son came to him and he was like dad i miss you you know what he said well, Robin is my obedient wife, so I see her children. You're not obedient. Your mother's not obedient. Do you remember that when he was talking to Gabe about Janelle? Yeah, and Gabe He's was like, like, let me take some accountability in this. Yeah. 
And, like, he broke it down. He bared his fucking soul. He was like, my girlfriend is so careful, too. He was yeah. like, I had to quarantine for two weeks before I could see her again after seeing you. Yeah. And Cody was like, well, I didn't know that. And he's like, well, you didn't ask. You wouldn't. You didn't know it because you haven't talked to me. You haven't fucking called. You yeah. haven't anything. I haven't talked to you in nine months. Yeah, dude, he's... He's picked his favorite wife. He's picked oh, his absolutely. favorite children. Absolutely. And, he's and fucking... the thing, too, that broke my heart was he was uh, talking to his dad and he was like, uh, so his, Cody started to react in rage. And he was like, I was able to come to you in all honesty. And you're just coming at me with anger. Like, why is this? I need you to speak to me with honesty like I was speaking to you. And I was like, Jesus Christ, for like an 18 or 19 year old, that is mature as fuck. And you know what? You know who raised that boy? Two women. Two women. Janelle and Christine. Yep. I love the crossover, like, with Christine's kids. Think that Janelle is, like, this badass. And she is, though. She this is. This badass yeah. independent woman. And then, like, all of Janelle's kids worship Christine as, yeah. like, this beautiful earth mama who raised them. And oh, I yeah. love that both of them acknowledge the role that each other has had in, in the upbringing of their kids. Well, and there's a couple other things, too. Like, the fact that when... Janelle's mom died in the middle of the pandemic, in the mi middle of the beginning of the pandemic. Cody didn't even think twice. He just got on a plane and went with her. You know, he, he, I'm sure he probably quarantined and stuff, but like all his rules didn't apply once Janelle's mom passed because that was a really big deal and it should have been and it was. Um, but then also you find out later, like him and Robin's nanny and the nanny's husband both got COVID. And then I just saw a cameo that he did because um, this woman posted it, and he's talking about how he had COVID. And so he's like, yeah, no, I had COVID. It's no fun. So, you know, like all of his stuff that he put in place to like, quote unquote, protect them, like divided the family completely. And then they still ended up getting COVID at Robin's house with the two kids who were immunocompromised, you know? So like, I don't know, just what the fuck? So that's our deep dive on Sister Wives. Thanks for hanging in with Yay! us, everybody. Um, stay tuned. It's going to get worse before it gets better. Our next episode is uh, all about Warren Jeffs and the icky fundamentalists. And... Yeah, this is like the bad Ugh. side of Mormonism. But this then... is the side that I did not grow up with. The side that I grew up with was more like the Sister Wives spectrum, for sure. But then, you know, we're going to... It was like early seasons, Sister Wives. Aww. Yeah. See, but when we come out of it, we're going to end... We're going to end everything on a high note with... Uh, I mean, just regular true crime schemes. It's cool, though. Yeah, it's really good. Like, it's going to be it's going to be good. And so. I'm going to help Aaron pronounce stuff correctly. I'm yeah. not saying out of the gate that you're going to mispronounce it, but you're probably going to mispronounce it. Oh, like the angel Moroni. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That stuff. Yeah, totally. I'm going to need help. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> I barely pronounced my own name correctly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, until next time. Um, Yeah. Send us an email if you have an idea for story yeah please or something you want to hear or just to like hey how's it going dude check out our fucking website though i'm serious like um and like because you know spotify and stuff uh if you don't want to use spotify then in our on our website yeah. it's all embedded yeah we like have, you can just fucking click on it and listen to it at work we have all of our episodes up on the website we also have all of our episodes up on our youtube yeah and true that. my favorite part about our youtube and i don't know if you guys know this is that I always embed a special secret picture into the videos, and you have to watch them for a certain amount of time to see who the picture of the week is. Sometimes it's a shirtless Christopher Walken. Sometimes it's Pete Davidson. Sometimes it's uh, Tom Hardy with his hand on his junk. It's weird. Uh, every once in a while, it's just like a corn dog. So you gotta, you know, you gotta watch to find out. We've got our Patreon. We've got all kinds of good content there. We are on iHeartRadio and iTunes, Player FM, Pocket Cast, all of them. And if you watch all of our videos and give us an email mm -hmm. of all of the different pictures, you get a free sticker and mug. Dude, hell yeah, you do. I just made that promotion up. I didn't even run it by Aaron. I like it, though. It was a it's big a good dick one. move. It was a big dick move, and I'm glad you made it. I support it. You might even get a tote. You Ooh, know what? the totes are dope. If you, if you <laughs> yes. can, and if you can accurately predict what the next picture Ooh, will be, then you get a tote. Then you get a free tote bag. And <laughs> by accurately predict, we mean give us a better idea than the one we were already going to use. Yes, yes, yes. Because like if yes, I was yes. going to use the Grinch, and you're like, <laughs> you should use this picture of Antonia Banderas eating spaghetti. I'd be like, 
You accurately <laughs> predicted it. That is a hundred. I don't know how you guessed it. That is what. Yes. Oh, totally. Here's your tote bag. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, we're blowing up this year. Get in on the ground level yeah. with our Patreon and with all of our stuff. And we'll keep you satisfied all year. Yeah, find us on Amway. <laughs> <laughs> we're next to the ham and the energy drink. <laughs> Hell yeah, we are. <laughs> 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 <laughs>